and I guess the cool part is, you know, having friends who are willing to, you know, I had a wedding, I got married in Montenegro, uh, you know, friends who are willing to, you know, get on a plane and come over and, and be with you. I mean, to me, that's really meaningful. How has the process changed you as a person? Um, it, it, I, I don't know that it has, other than the point of not my circus, right? Other than allowing me to step out and say, um, you know, when I'm having conversations with people, oh, your politicians, oh, you know, your government. Uh, it's not mine. Um, I mean, and, and so what that's done is it's brought me a great sense of calm. Because again, the anger, the anger is, you know, you're in the relationship where every day you're fighting and you're miserable. And then you end the relationship and then it's like, oh, you know, you're, you, you kind of look back with a bit of fondness. I don't know how fond I am, but I certainly have a bit more respect. I know that, you know, we talk. You never would have heard me five years ago giving the U.S. credit for anything. Actually, I give them credit for, for free tap water in most restaurants. That was, and I still think it's, that's very important. But um, listen, there is, there, is a, there is a method to, there are things in the United States that I do respect. Um, doesn't mean I want to be part of it. Um, obviously, they've been very successful. People there are very successful. I think, you know, you, when you live in the United States, when I lived in the United States, oh, lazy Americans. On a global scale, Americans are not really lazy. Um, so, you know, I think it's, what it's changed in me is a greater ability to be like, now that I'm not sitting in that toxic relationship, in my mind at least, uh, I can be, you know, it's, it's, again, it's breaking up with a girl and then saying, you know what, it didn't work for us, but like, she was good at that. And for me, I think that's been a very positive kind of um, calming thing. Um, have you noticed um, animosity between you and all friends who are still in the States? Uh, you know, I, I, I have a group of close friends who understand is, to as much of an extent as they can. Uh, I have friends who, you know, they tell me, you know, one day I'm going to join you. I'm like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, I know that they won't, and, and I respect that. Listen, I can't, like, people think, you know, I'm here to have as many people renounce, you know, burn the place down. It's not my goal. People need to make the best decision for them. And so I think that, you know, most of my friends were always older uh, than I was. I'm, I'm getting to that point in life where now I have friends who are, who are also younger, who are also really, you know, successful and on-the-ball people. Um, but I've got a lot of friends who are older, and I think they, they have a maturity of, you do what's right for you, you know, we're doing what's right for us, um, we understand the best we can. Uh, I don't think there's any animosity. Uh, I mean, I guess I have had relationships with animosity because people wanted to be, um, you know, they, they just felt the need to be jerks about them not needing an e-visa or, you know, there was one... A uh, friend of mine who, when I renounced, it's like, what are you going to do without visa-free travel to Equatorial Guinea? Like, I still have Equatorial Guinea. And it's like, uh, okay. Like, these are, so, I mean, no, there's no animosity. Um, and I guess the cool part is, you know, having friends who are willing to, you know, I had a wedding, I got married in Montenegro, uh, you know, friends who are willing to, you know, get on a plane and come over and, and be with you. I mean, to me, that's really meaningful. Uh, and it's also the value of having fewer friendships. I mean, just having fewer good friendships. Um, I think if you're the kind of person who thinks in the way that we do here at Nomad Capitalist, you know, colors outside the lines, uh, you're probably not cut out to have 50 different friends. What does your family think? Um, you know, I mean, I don't entirely know. Uh, you know, my family, they, we are waspy, you know, it's, it's less emotive. Um, I know that there were one or two people who were, you know, kind of frustrated during the process. They said, you know, I don't, I guess like anyone in a family, you know, if, if, even if they know you've thought through it and you've really done a lot of soul searching, they, they, they you know, they haven't done it for you. And so it's hard for them to say, yes, you know, you're ready. Um, you know, again, my family, uh, you know, we meet in places around the world. I mean, I'm fortunate to have, you know, parents who are in, who are in good health um, and, and they can do that and they're, you know, successful enough to be able to do that. 
Um, if they weren't, I guess I could I could fly them in myself. Um, no, I, I will be honest. I mean, you know, I don't. I didn't. You know, come from some huge, you know, Italian or Latin family, or, you know, whatever these big families where you know sixty two people get together for for Sunday dinner every week. I, you know, we didn't have that, um, which made it easier. Um, that you know, the the pool of people to talk to was smaller. And what does your wife think? Well, I mean, she supports me, and that's really the 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 great thing about her is she's just a, a very supportive and 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 loving person. I mean, yeah, I, I think here's the interesting perspective, right? Someone who, and, and she's been to the United States, and, and she spent, I think, a summer there once, and, um, but someone who's not f from the United States, I mean, can have a more agnostic view about it. Um, you know, the, the biggest, the biggest, you know, Issues, not issues, but the times when I, when I had friends or colleagues or, you know, business associates, lawyers, whatever, who are like, Andrew, you're doing that. It was really about their culture viewed U.S. citizenship as, as the be-all, end-all. Like, that was the golden ticket to be from Georgia or to be from, uh, you know, uh, from Cambodia or to be from, you know, Colombia and be able to have, like, that, like, American passport is the, is the golden ticket. And, and you're just saying, like, ah, no thanks. Um, I don't know that anyone that if my friends was insulted by that. They're just like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> um, my wife, um, you know, coming from Russia, not being a traditional Russian. I mean, I think we sh we shared that. I mean, she never really identified so much with Russia, uh, the same way I never so much identified with the U.S. It was a good fit, um, but you know, even that said. Um, she never saw the United States as the golden ticket either, and so therefore she said, well, you know, it sounds like you're calmer, it sounds like you're happier, it sounds like not much in your life has changed, you know, other than you just don't have this piece of paper. And she says, if that's, you know, what's better for you, then you should do it. And you shouldn't listen to people, you shouldn't listen to naysayers. She's been a great voice for me um, to help me, you know, drown out the naysayers. How do you manage seeing your family now? Yeah, as I said, I, mean, I, I fly them in, or they'll, or they'll fly in. Um, again, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, my my wife, who comes from that kind, of, you know, that that kind of Southern European, you know, Caucasian, you know, cultural background of of Georgian slash Armenian, you know, uh, she calls her her parents and her grandmother a lot more often. Uh, you know, I call my grandma, I call my grandparents, I call my, uh, my grandmother. My grandmother, got, she said she'd never get a computer, by the way. Like, for, for as long as I was interested in computers for 25 years now, she said, I'll never get any computer. She finally got a smartphone, and now she's on Facebook. And so we'll chat. Sometimes it's, it's Mrs. H and I. Sometimes it's just, it's just my grandmother and I. And she sends all the little Snoopy stickers, and, <laughs> and we have a nice chat. But, you know, if I called my grandmother every other day, I, I think she'd get sick of me. Uh, that's just that's just who we are, and I think it's hard for a lot of other cultures to understand that. Um, but we do meet up in different places, and and it's nice, and and you know we we can handle. Um, you know, even when I lived in the United States, we didn't see each other every day. So, I guess my point to someone considering this, whether it's just being an expat or actually expatriating, uh, is you know you can manage. There's a way to manage it. And, 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 you know, potentially my family has said, hey, you know, if, if, if when my family grows, um, maybe we want to find a place near you. You know, I mean, people can come to Mexico. They can come to Montenegro. They can come to Malaysia. I mean, they can come most places in the world, you know, especially if you're an American. You can easily go most places. Uh, does it feel weird that your children would not be American? No. No. I, you know, I, I, I know expats who live in places where their children have a lot of problems. I mean, just, you know, I have a friend who his children can't get a simple savings account where they live because they don't take U.S. citizens. And the child wanted to follow in his footsteps and the father's footsteps and renounce, and, and, and the embassy wouldn't let them because they're 11 years old. We don't let 11-year-olds make these big permanent decisions. Um, but yet, to the bank, an 11-year-old is an 11-year-old. Um, again, here, here's the issue, I think, right? I mean, this is the bubble that is kind of being American, and that's what, where most people live. Uh, you know, the thing that, you know, the first generation, I think, stresses out about at times, or, or, or stresses out about, you know, they, they worry about, um, you know, is, is, you know, 
having the opportunity to go on a whim. You know, if my children are born in other environments, they'll adapt to those other environments. I mean, in the same way that I don't think, you know, most folks from you're from, they might want to live in the United States again for a job. But, you know, really, you know, economics aside, they'd like to be in Macedonia. That's what they know. It's what they embrace. And so I think once the first generation passes, um, it really doesn't become much of an issue. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, Learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.